welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. I'm your host, Acacia Courtney. Happy Preakness Day. We'll see today in the second duel of the Triple Crown if Kentucky Derby winner Nyquist can get the job done once again. I think he can. But on top of that, we have 10 races right here at Gulfstream Park. So let's check out those track and weather conditions. To start the day, we are fast and firm here at Gulfstream Park. Race number one is a claiming event with a purse of $16,000 for the three-year-olds and up, which have never won two races. It's a mile and 16th on the turf. Scratch the number six, JD's Kitten, and the number nine, the main track only, Seeking the Perfect. All set, and they're off. From the center, Road Warrior Max begins right on the money and will try to establish the lead from Banco De Nero, who comes away much closer today. He's a joint second. Awesome Sting down toward the inside. Followed at the rail by Crowd Idol, then True Diplomacy, who's out wide. El Can Girl is between horses. The early trailer is English Mahavir. They pass under the wire for the first time and now head into the clubhouse turn, and the leader is Road Warrior Max and Alex Gonzalez by a length and a quarter. From the outside, Banco De Nero is second. Awesome Sting is pocketed up third. True Diplomacy on hold while fourth and three lengths behind. And it's El Can Girl. He's also much closer, only five lengths off the pace setters, and the two at the back are long shots English Mahavir and Crowd Idol. They went 24 and two for a normal opening quarter speed, and the leader is Road Warrior Max by a length and a quarter. From second, Banco De Nero from third, Awesome Sting. And fourth is True Diplomacy while on hold, wants to do a little bit more, but Trujillo wants him to sit right where he is. From fifth, it's El Can Girl, a stretch of three to English Mahavir and Crowd Idol. In Inside half a mile from home, they went 48 and two for the opening half mile, and Road Warrior Max continues to shoulder the load as the lead by a length. Banco De Nero asks for a little bit more now by Rios. He's not really responding. From third, it's Awesome Sting. Then comes True Diplomacy. El Can Girl tries to stoke the fire with English Mahavir, and they run past the quarter mile pole. Three quarters, 111 and four, and they turn for the money. Well rationed up top, Road Warrior Max spins in with a three length lead. Banco De Nero continues it that one pace from second, then to the outside coming on English Mahavir. Javier, true diplomacy toward the inside, but in deep stretch, the favorite's looking good. Road Warrior Max on a two-length lead. Gaining second is Banco De Niro, but the wire's coming first, and Road Warrior Max wins. Banco De Niro was second in front of the Oken Girl, who rallied to be third in 142 flat. Number five, Road Warrior Max wins the opener with Alex Gonzalez aboard. Doug Potter, the trainer, owned by Deborah Smith. Second race today is a mile and 16th on the turf as well, claiming event with a purse of $16,000 for three-year-olds and up, which have never won three races or three-year-olds. Scratch the number seven, the main track only, Criola's boy. And they're up. Level beginning. From the outside, Colton's honor begins nicely. No Tassatines is showing speed. JC Mamba from in between horses. Tugging wants to do a little bit more from down toward the inside. Il Volo much closer today, so the pace is a crawl early. Second last is Zippy Zappy, and out the back door early, the trailer bows bullet. They run into the first turn now, and on top, it's No Calcetines leading Colton's honor by a neck. Pocketed up third is J.C. Mambo, only a length and a half off the lead. El Volo is fourth. Zippy Zappi is fifth, while three wide. And Bo's Bullet is unhurried at the back, only three lengths off the pace setters as they go into the back stretch. They went through the opening quarter in 24 and 1, and the leader at 45 to 1. No Calcetines by a length. Colton's honor is second. Il Volo in the two path. J.C. Mamba tugging on Rispoli. No place to work right now, though. Three Three wide out there is Zippy Zappy, who's covered ground and trailing the field is Bo's Bullet, but tries to spy an opening between horses and move up here after a 48 and four opening half mile. You can throw a blanket over the field here as they move into the far turn with no Calcetines and Colton's honor. The two long shots do the heavy lifting. Il Volo is third. JC Mamba, no place to go. Appears to have horse, but no place to prove it. Out wide is Zippy Zappy and Bo's bullet held up between horses. He's still not asked for much. Now he just got a crack on the shoulder as now the pace quickens. Looks like Rispoli wants inside with JC Mamba, but up on the outside, Zippy Zappy is going to be four wide and on the attack. Threading the needle indeed. JC Mamba got through. Heads up riding there and JC Mamba now cuts the corner and opens. Zippy Zappy trying to get after him again. Second, three back to Bo's Bullet in third. But inside the final furlong, Rispoli won it, turning for home. It's JC Mamba who saves the ground and goes on to victory by three. Zippy Zappy second, Bo's Bullet third, and Il Volo fourth in 142 and four. Number four, JC Mamba gets through on the rail to win the second race. Matt Rispoli was the jockey. Charles Simon, the trainer, owned by Kurt Luscom and Jessica Bedard.
The third race today, six furlongs on the main track, a claiming event with a purse of $15,000 for the three-year-olds and up. There'll be seven runners heading to the gate. Please note there's a jockey change on the number three, who will be ridden by Marcos Meneses. And they're off. Take Time to Pray begins right on the money and quickly establishes a two-length lead over Helper Rye, who comes away racing in second. Total accounting is out of their third. Houston Bull is away fourth. Followed outside by Whiskey Ding, then Keed Cachet, and the trailer is Fastidia's son. They make their way to the far turn, and Take Time to Pray is loose up top on a three-length lead. Total accounting and Helper Rye second and third with Whiskey Ding in fourth. Houston Bull, Hardwood and Ralph fifth in front of Fastidia's son, and the trailer is Keed Cachet. 22 and 4 for the opening quarter speed, well within the scope of Take Time to Pray, who goes to the top of the stretch on a six length lead now. Total accounting is there second from Whiskey Ding on the outside of uh, inside running Helper Rye. Keed Cachet and Fastidia Sun are next. Houston Bull calls it an afternoon, but Take Time to Pray continues to run away. Four, half, 45 and 2 for the opening half mile, and it's Take Time to Pray who settles into the lane on a seven length lead now. Up on the outside, Keith Cachet does begin to do some work down the outside to try to get second. Fastidia's son, total accounting. Keith Cachet is trying to get into a spot here, but take time to pray. He's got it all locked up. No need to pray. He's home free. Take time to pray by six or seven. Total accounting second. Keith Cachet third in front of Helper Rye fourth and 111 flat. Number one, take time to pray, gets it done at three to five. Christian Navarro was the pilot, trained by Peter Walder, owned by Gerard Stutchbury. Fourth race today is a maiden claiming with a purse of $15,000. It's five furlongs on the turf for the maiden's three-year-olds and up. And they're up. Absinthe begins nicely, so does Shape of My Heart, and there goes the favorite, Canarsi Kid, who puts ahead in front. Shape of My Heart right alongside in the early stages, and Absinthe will settle down third. Down to the inside races Stormy Leaf from fourth, and now punching between horses goes Debo, honor with courage in that top flight as well. Then it's El Catracho, and Wadi will have to do it from last as they move into the far turn. It's the odds-on favorite, Canarsi Kid, and Jockey Eder Martinez, who lead it by a neck. Shape of My Heart is alongside second, four better than the rest, led by Debo, and honor with courage trying to run on his wadi after a 21 and 2 opening quarter they pass the quarter mile pole and turn for home canarsi kid now starts to get away from shape of my heart second wadi is underway but he's got an awful tall task if he wants to run down canarsi kid in fact he'll have to wait for another afternoon because today's the day for canarsi kid canarsi kid running up the score inside the final 16th he's six or seven in front canarsi kid in a gallop wadi second shape of my heart third then el catracho and an absinthe to complete the high five in 55 and three. Number four, Canarsi Kid wins the fourth race. Edder Martinez was the jockey trained by Carlo Vacaressa and owned by Loda Lux Stables. The fifth race is a maiden claiming with a purse of $14,000. It's a mile on the main track. Scratch the number six, Templar Warrior. All set. They're off. From the outside, Huddy Up begins nicely in the center. BF Forever is looking for the lead down toward the inside. That's Steady the Ship coming away in the top flight. In fact, Steady the Ship wants to be part of the pace with BF Forever in the run out of the chute. Little Paul reigned back to run fourth behind the embattled pace setters with Feronius on his outside. Then down toward the inside goes, you can crash my party. And Mr. Beans is the trailer. They run out of the one-mile shoot and head to the opening quarter speed in 24-1, and one, and BF Forever has it three parts of a length. Huddy up is second. Steady the ship. Already got a crack to go forward from third. Little Paul races in fourth as BF Forever trying to make a mid-race move here. Feronius is now four wide on the outside. Then you can crash my party and far back to Mr. Beans. They go to the half mile mark and BF Forever still under stout restraint at the half mile. Leads it by three and a half after a 47 and one opening half mile. Little Paul is second. Feronius is third. Steady the ship fourth. That's all for Huddy up. Then you can crash my party and Mr. Beans. Less than three eighths of a mile away. BF Forever still doing it nicely up front. BF Forever at the five sixteenths on a three length lead. Little Paul officially got the go green light to go forward, but he'll have to hurry from there as BF Forever continues to find up top. From third, it's Feronius. 
20th, then Mr. Beans rallying from last after three quarters and one twelve and three. They turn for home. The leader is BF Forever. The strides are two and a half clear of Little Paul second. Down the outside and Mr. Beans coming on, then steady the ship through the final furlong. BF Forever is on the ropes to the attack. Little Paul one more time, but Mr. Beans has a chance to run them both down. 16th pole, Little Paul with his head cocked sideways. He's looking at Mr. Beans running him off. It's Mr. Beans to win it. Little Paul second, BF Forever third, then steady the ship in 142. Glenn. Number three, Mr. Beans wins the first leg of the Rainbow Six at 45 to one. Pedro Monterey Jr. was the jockey, Louis Ramirez the trainer, owned by Penn Eagle Racing Stable LLC. Paid $93.60 to win. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back after these words. furlongs on the main track. It's a maiden race with a purse of $42,000 for the three-year-olds and up. Scratch the number one, who's Jack? And they're off. From the far outside, Game Lad wins the start. Wild Good moves up to be second. It was an uneventful beginning for Awesome My Way, so now he's into contention from third. Back fourth inside is Dangerous Ben, the Endure Falcon, who had to tap on the brakes there. It's a stretch of another three lengths back to all hundreds as they head down the backstretch. The leader now is Wild Good. Wild Good by a neck. Game Lad is there second. Up on the outside, Awesome My Way, three wide while third. Pocketed up fourth is Dangerous Bend. He's only about two and a half lengths off the lead. He's three better than Jira Falcon and far back to all hundreds. They move into the far turn, just 23 seconds for the opening quarter. Wild Good has the lead. Game Lad comes to him again second. Awesome My Way perched off the speed, three wide third. All dressed up with no place to go as Dangerous Bend. Just needs some place to run for Eddie Castro behind the speed from fourth as they run to the top of the stretch. They went 46 and one for the opening half mile. Jaramillo working overtime on Wild Good and up off the outside. Here's Awesome Bend. Awesome Bend finally into the clear and here he comes in between horses game lad is exactly that with an eighth of a mile to go nunez goes to work on game lad but dangerous bend is pressing past on the outside it's dangerous bend and eddie castro inside the 16th pole they're moving away dangerous bend in front game lad was second wild good third from far back that's all hundreds who came from far back to be fourth in front of awesome my way in 118 and three number four dangerous bend wins the sixth race eddie castro was aboard trained by david fox and owned by harold l queen The seventh race is one mile. It's a starter allowance with a purse of $34,000. This one meant to be on the turf, but it is off the turf and the track is now listed as sloppy. Scratch the number one, Fair Prospect. The number four, Whisper on the Wind. And the five, Besame. And they're off. Galleon Mast appeared to break well from an outside gate down to the inside. Fear the Falcon showing speed in between horses. The favorite for all the marvels comes away in the top flight. And Moonlight Bandit is also away well. So it's Moonlight Bandit and for all the marbles, the first two, three better than Fear the Falcon, then Galleon Mast, and the early trailer is El Cyclone. They run out of the chute now and hook up with the main course. They pass through the opening quarter in 23 and 2. The leader is for all the marbles by a length and a half. Fear the Falcon and Trujillo come off the fence to race in second. Packet it up third, now Moonlight Bandit. Stretch of three to Galley and Mast and two to El Cyclone. They're strung out. They're about six or seven from front to back with less than five eighths to travel. The leader is for all the marbles by two. Off the fence now, Moonlight Bandit is second. From third, that's Fear the Falcon. Galleon Mast tries an inside opportunity from fourth and three better than El Cyclone. 46 and two for the opening half mile. That's usually pretty strong as they run around the far turn. The leader is for all the marbles. Rispoli getting a little bit uh, serious now and moving to him is second is Moonlight Bandit. Stretch of three, Galleon Mast. Jaramillo goes to work. He's one 
one paced while third. Meanwhile, for all the marbles just came off the bridle, so Moonlight Bandit's the one to beat. Moonlight Bandit, three to two, and that looks pretty good off the corner after three quarters in one eleven and two. Now Galleon Master will be tipped to the far outside with for all the marbles between horses, but the marbles are going to go to Moonlight Bandit. Moonlight Bandit inside the final 16th is just widening the advantage. For all the marbles is second, Galleon Mass third, Moonlight Bandit easily. For all the marbles second, Galleon Mass third, then Fear the Falcon and El Ciclone, 138 and 1 was the running time. Number three, Moonlight Bandit gets the job done, piloted by Edgar Zayas, trained and owned by Safi Joseph. The eighth race is a claiming event with a purse of $18,000 for the three-year-olds and up, a mile and a sixteenth also off the turf. Scratch the number three, Zengato, the four, Walker's Landing, the five, Thinking Quality, and the nine, Tis Time Is Now. And they're up. From the center, Zane begins the best. Up on the outside goes Pep the Champ from second. Imagine that mom is away in early third. Van Holiday out sprinted. He's actually last, is moving up on the outside of him. And into fourth is two jacks wild as they run around that first turn. The leader now is Zane by a length and a half. Pep the Champ is second. Van Holiday finds his feet to be third from Imagine That Mom in fourth. And trailing the field now is two jacks wild. Into the back stretch they go, and Zane has the lead. Controls the pace after a 25 and 1 opening quarter speed. Aramio is perched on the outside with Pep the Champ in second. Van Holiday is third, about three lengths behind. Two Jacks Wild tip three wide, which puts Imagine That Mom between horses. They go down the back stretch. Remember, the first finish line is in use here. And the leader is Zane, three parts of length. Pep the Champ trying to inject a little more pace into the race while second from Imagine That Mom, who's asked to quicken a bit while third after a 50-second opening half mile. Then two Jacks Wild, and if you're looking for Vent Holiday, you'll find him last of the five and about five lengths off the lead as they now get ready to swing to the far turn. With the lead, it's Zane, three parts of a length. Pep the Champ working very hard while second. Imagine that mom is in striking distance at seven to one from third. And Ven Holiday finds to do, uh, start, start to do a little bit of work now. In fact, he's moving sharply, and Zane just left the rail open. Here comes the favorite, Ven Holiday. Thank you very much, says the jockey on Ven Holiday as he moves up to take the lead from Zane, who left the rail open second. Imagine that mom is next, then two jacks while they turn home. Three quarters, 114 and three. Ven Holiday kicking away. Zane second, two jacks wild third, and that's probably the way they'll finish. In fact, Zane is trying to hold second from two jacks wild. Two jacks wild might get him, but Van Holiday is wrapped up. Van Holiday by five or six in the end. Second is two jacks wild. Third is Zane. Then imagine that mom and pep the champ. Number one, Van Holiday does well on the sloppy track, ridden by Elvis Trujillo, trained by Rohan Crichton and owned by Rohan Crichton and Rick Tatoli. Let's take a break. We'll be back in a moment. Race 9 is 7 furlongs on the main track. It's an allowance optional claiming with a purse of $37,000 for the state-bred 3-year-olds and up. And they're up. JB Quick begins nicely. Call to honor sharp off the shelf and moving to challenge in between horses. Here's You Can't Stop Me moving up. Kokomo Wildcat away with speed and looks good as out of their fourth. Coal Miner broke well, but he shuffled back to fifth and he leads the back markers, including Dancing in the Heat, Mr. Smith, JB Quick, and Holy Highway. Down the back stretch they go. You can't stop me. Leads it a half a length. Called honor is there. Second looks good off the speed. Third in the clear. Fourth is Kokomo Wildcat. Stretch of three. Mr. Smith is on hold while fifth. Down to the inside and trying to improve dancing in the heat. Out three wide is Coal Miner. Then Holy Highway and JB Quick. 
22 and 1 for the opening quarter speed. You can't stop me. Leads it by a neck. Working harder to stay close is call to honor. Kokomo Wildcat looms large off the speed while third and three wide. Looks good as asked to quick and not really doing it yet. Stretch of three to Mr. Smith. The veteran Holy Highway tries to get underway as they run to the top of the stretch. It's you can't stop me in front. Kokomo Wildcat now asked to do some work, but he's not gained on the leader yet. From the back, Holy Highway tipping off cover with a full head of steam. They turn for home. You can't stop me has put away Kokomo Wildcat will have to deal with Holy Highway on the outside you can't stop me fending off all challenges so far but here's the final surge from Holy Highway Holy Highway at you can't stop me you can't stop me implored by Rios for just a few more yards Holy Highway surging photo finish really close you can't stop me dug in the whole way but Holy Highway came to call on the outside their noses apart in 124 and 4 Number five, you can't stop me. Couldn't be stopped in the ninth race. Jesus Rios was aboard. Marcial Navarro, the trainer owned by Guillermo Barrios, paid $22.80 to win. The tenth race is a claiming event with a purse of $16,000 for the Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up, which have never won two races. It's five furlongs and will be off the turf. Scratch the number three, Cristancia. The number nine, Ocala Spirit. And the ten, Daddy's Reasons. And runners away. Picture perfect beginning. Trying to establish the leader, there are far a four or five across the track. Villainy is away in the top flight. Poison Art from down toward the inside. And the favorite, Lady Nura, now puts her head in front. Just to her inside and moving closer is Cowtown Jane as they take it around the far turn. Three wide is Just to Coyote. That'll mean Villainy is four wide. Blazing Diamond behind her. Then to the inside, Emma Missouri. The two at the back are Cherise Wynn and Glotona again. They went 22 and four for the opening quarter speed. Cowtown Jane on the inside, Lady Nur on the outside. Their heads apart. Villainy wants to get out. She's five or six wide. Meanwhile, Blazing Diamond is coming off cover to try to get to the leaders as they turn for the money. Lady Nura has the lead. Blazing Diamond set down driving on the outside. She has good looking momentum for Raul Mena. And here comes Blazing Diamond to take the lead now. Lady Nura's back to second, then Cowtown Jane. Blazing Diamond shifting ground. Lady Nura's battling back. Lady Nura's battling back at Blazing Diamond, photo finish. Blazing Diamond appeared to have them put away, but Lady Nura had other ideas. They hit the wire together in a minute flat. Number eight, Blazing Diamond gets the head bob. Matt Verspoli was aboard for his second win today. Trained by Aubrey Mirage and owned by Marco Thoroughbred Corp. Paid $28 to win. In the late pick five, if you had five of five, that paid $15.50. Four of five paid 52 cents. In the super high five, combination 854111, that paid $3,742.70. Six of six in the pick six paid $86.16, and there is a carryover of $63,333.08. And that wraps it up for today. Hope you made lots of money here at Gulfstream and at our sister track at Pimlico. We'll see you back tomorrow, Sunday, post time at 1.15. Hit the, hay. Hit the hay, I've been working all day. Hit the hay, Hit the hay. what do you say? Hit the, Hit the hay, Hit the hay, well I'm tired. Let me tell you Jack, I'm so tired.